G'day, in this video I'm going to talk about why every K-6 math lesson needs pictures. G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. Welcome to this video, which is the third in the series on successful teaching of mathematics in years K-6. to six. So why should we use pictures? And by pictures, I'm using that in a sort of generic sense. Pictures, diagrams, charts, videos, even physical objects. I'm basically talking about illustrations of the mathematics that we're teaching. And my view is that we should use them in basically every lesson. So why should we? Well, the first point is, and it's a pretty essential one, numbers are abstract. And by that I mean, if we talk about the number three, it's not even something we can write down. We can write a symbol for three that represents three, that is technically speaking a numeral, but three itself is an idea. It's something that we ascertain in our minds. It's something that mathematicians through the centuries have um, come to, you know, have developed an understanding of, but the number three doesn't actually exist in a physical form. So we can have a collection of three objects or any other number, of course. Um, and three is associated with that, but it's not the set of objects itself. So I'm not going to go too far with that, but it's, a, it's, a, it's partly a philosophical point, but it's essential for understanding that as we set out to teach mathematics. So in other words, if we're going to explain what three is, we need to illustrate it in a variety of ways, including objects, pictures, diagrams, videos, and all those things. The second point is the symbols that we use to record numbers are complex. Now they're in a written form, so they're not abstract. We can see them written on a whiteboard or, you know, appearing on a video or written in a child's math book. But they're complex. They're dense with meaning, especially once we get into multi-digit numbers. So a single digit is relatively straightforward, but when we get to two-digit numbers and beyond, and especially when we get to fractions. The meanings behind the symbols are very complicated, very complex. And so students need help to understand what those symbols mean. I do apologise if you can hear that wind. It's blowing quite hard around here at the moment. And so students need help, children need help, in understanding what a symbol is representing, what the meaning behind the symbol is, and we will use pictures and diagrams and so on. Basically, I'm arguing that we don't just go with the symbols. My recollection of math lessons is that it's all symbols, and they got more and more complicated as we went up through the, the, the grades at school, but it's so complex to understand that, um, that we need some help. And so I enjoyed it when teachers had illustrations of what we were talking about that would help uh, me to understand that. Number three is, and it relates to the, the, the last point, students need support to connect symbols with their meaning. So uh, we will use pictures and diagrams and illustrations to help the children to make those connections because it's very difficult to do that on your own. So ultimately we want our students to handle just the symbols. Of course we do, that's how we do mathematics, but along the way the students will need support to get there. And last of all, everyone wants to know what's the point. Why are we teaching mathematics? Why do we have to learn this stuff? What relevance does it have for me? Because understanding mathematics involves understanding symbolic representations of abstract meanings. Everyone wants to know why are we doing this? Why it seems like a waste of time, I don't understand it. And so we will use whatever methods are at our disposal, but I'm suggesting in this video that those are pictures or some variation of that to help us to see how the connections are made and, and how it all connects, as I said in other videos, with real life. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. If you arrived here via a Google search or something similar and you've never heard me before, I hope you'll go back and see the other two videos, but also I invite you to add your name and email address over here in this form so that I can send you notification when the fourth video in the series comes out that will be the last one and the fourth video is entitled how to get your students to love math so I really hope that you'll see that one I'm looking forward to um, presenting that one on video shortly other than that that's it from me for this video I look forward to talking to you again very very soon